Welcome. How is everyone doing today? Fantastic. All right. Before we begin, I would like to tell you a story about interactivity. So I have this friend, Dave. Dave and I were in a coffee shop in Seattle. Now, if you know anything about the Pacific Northwest, you should know that it's filled with coffee shops. They're usually small, they serve great coffee, and they're kind of hipsterish. Anyways, it was Saturday at noon. We were in one called Milstead. I was on my phone, Dave was to my right. When Dave pokes me and says, Kelvin, check this out, and puts something in front of me. I look over and it's a pretty small image. Now, I didn't have my glasses on at the time, so I reach over and I pinch the zoom. Dave gives me this look and he says, what? Apparently, he just handed me a physical newspaper, <laughs> not something that really supports touch gestures. It took him a few seconds to realize what I did and me a few months to finally get over it. So what does this tell us about interactivity? We currently live in a time when we can demand more from our images. Likely, you can pinch to zoom an image to see more details. You can probably also hover over it to reveal a tooltip that tells you more about that picture. Finally, you can probably click it and it'll direct you to a website. This is the same with data visualization. Tableau provides many ways in which you can add interactivity to your visits. Interactivity is a core principle of Tableau because you want to enable you to ask and answer your own questions. In this talk, we will show you what is available, we will introduce you to some new concepts that you may have just seen at Devs on Stage, but ultimately, we want to inspire you to dig deeper. Static graphs and newspapers are things of the past. Your visits should not be. Before we jump into Tableau, we want to share a little bit about ourselves. My name's Kelvin. And I'm Katrina. Katrina is a product manager at Tableau. And in her free time, when she's not exploring data, she's hiking the beautiful trails of Seattle, petting the cute dogs, and baking cookies. <laughs> Thanks, Owen. <laughs> this is Kelvin. Kelvin is a huge fan of photography. He's taking this beautiful photo of the Japanese Alps. He'd also love to take a photo of you all today. Say, interactivity. Interactivity. <laughs> In addition to being a huge fan of photography, he's also been to every single ramen shop in Seattle, and he loves Disney. Kelvin, what's your favorite Disney movie? Oh, the hardest question. Uh, I'd just say it's Tangled. I must have watched it like 10 times. Wow. How about you? I personally really like Finding Nemo, but I can't say I've seen that 10 times. What I have seen 10 times is Inception. Looks like we're both movie fans at least. Hopefully everyone else here is also movie fans. <laughs> let's build a viz that can help us and everyone here explore movie data and let's talk about interactivity along the way. How does that sound? Sounds great. Cool. I found this, da uh, I found this data set at themoviedb.com. It has some fields like main genre, title, profit, and revenue. I think we can use it. Looks perfect. In the next hour, we're gonna cover a number of tools to teach you all about interactivity and how you can incorporate it into your data visits in Tableau. We're gonna talk about the following topics. Selection, highlighting, filtering, parameters, sets, tooltips, URL actions, navigation actions, and dashboard buttons. We've got a lot of content for you all today. To help guide this talk, we've come up with three categories to help you understand when you should use each tool. Tableau has a lot of different ways to add interactivity, and it's hard to know when you should use each. If you're building interactive content, chances are you're building it for someone other than yourself. No matter how good we are at our jobs, it's really hard to predict exactly what our users who are coming to our visits and dashboards want to know. 
By adding interactivity, we can help our users create their own experience for themselves and answer their own questions. Maybe your user wants to find data that's relevant to them in a sea of other data. Or maybe they want to reveal more data to dive into the details of something that they find interesting. Or maybe they want to change the viewer context to better answer their own question. No matter what their question is when they come into your dashboard, they should be able to interact with it to better and more quickly answer their own question and to help keep them engaged. Kelvin, do you want to start us off talking about selection? I'd love to. So selection is going to be a major driver of change in Tableau. And one of the main ways we will interact with uh, marks today. There are a lot of ways of doing selection in Tableau. So let's just go right into some examples. That is not the right one. Cool. So here I have a chart of average movie popularity versus profit. Now, you probably know there are a lot of movies. Some of them are very popular and generate a ton of profit. But also, they can be not very popular and don't generate a lot of profit or anything in between. The most basic type of selection is simply clicking. When you click on a mark, you can see that a bold line is drawn around it. This lets you know that it's selected. You also see that everything else fades into the background. Now, I say that selection drives change. What kind of change can we see? A very simple example is the instant analytics that Tableau offers. So if we go to analytics, let's drag out, uh, let's say, the average line. So now we see the average of all the points here in terms of profit and popularity. If I selected multiple, let's say by dragging, you see that the instant analytics immediately change to reflect this. If I was interested in, let's say, in all the action movies here, we can select all of them by going to this tooltip and clicking action and doing something called a tooltip selection. When I click action, you can see all of the action marks are now selected and the average line has been adjusted. As you can see, action movies, although they are not, uh, although they are a lot more popular, average, uh, they don't actually generate much more profit. Now, how can we enable more functionality for your user? If you go to worksheet and you go down to show view toolbar, show on hover, you will get this toolbar that is usually on by default on Maps. But a lot of views in Tableau actually can turn it on if you just do that. And now your user has uh, access to a lot more uh, tools for selection. For example, this radio selection, which lets you select all the marks that are equidistant or within a given distance from a single point. And as you can see, the instant analytics adjust to reflect this. Cool. So we just talked about how selection drives change. What other kinds of change can, you expect, uh, can your users expect from your views? Let's move on to highlighting. So as Katrina mentioned, there are three categories that we have in this talk. Highlighting and highlight actions fall into the find relevant data because highlighting is great for allowing your user to find certain points within a sea of other data while remaining in context. Let's look at an example. Here is the same chart as before, popularity versus profit, except this time it's filtered to my favorite, Disney movies. Now, what if I was interested in just the popularity and profit of adventure Disney movies? I can go to the right, and in this legend card, there is an icon here that says highlight selected items. When I click this uh, icon, I can now click on adventure, and you can see that all of the highlight, uh, all of the adventure marks are now highlighted. Now, note how highlighting is different from selection. Selection draws that thick line around the mark, whereas, uh, whereas highlighting simply just pushes it in front and pushes everything into the back and fades it away. Another thing to note about selection that I forgot to mention was that selection stays between saves. So if you were to select and then leave, uh, save your workbook and leave, 
Whenever you open it again, you will see that those marks are still selected. Cool. So, adventure. We can also see that when I select one of these marks now, you see that it will also uh, highlight all the other marks because if I clicked on the icon. Okay, we just talked about highlighting on a sheet. What would highlighting on a dashboard do? To do that, I would like to intro actions to you, but through an analogy. So, as Katrina mentioned, her favorite Disney movie is Finding Nemo. Here's a scene, here are two scenes from Finding Nemo, one from Finding Nemo, the other from Finding Dory, and at the top we have Nemo and Dory. Nemo and Dory, in this case, represent marks that you can click on or select. On the bottom, the two scenes are views that are in your dashboard. Now, an action would have you select one of the marks on top, and the highlight action will then highlight, let's say, Dory in both of the views on the bottom. What does this look like in Tableau? Here we have a dashboard with two views. Now, before this talk, I never knew that Disney had a lot of subcategories or divisions. They have pictures, productions, animation studios, etc. Each one of these studios is responsible for some of their favorite movies. What if I wanted to find all the movies on the right in the budget versus profit graph that relate to the mark that I select on the left? I will do a highlight action. To do this, we go to Dashboard, Actions, and now we bring up this thing called the Actions Dialog. The Actions dialog is a place where you can add and manage your actions. If we click on Add Action, and we add a highlight action, we can now add a highlight action. Let's call this uh, Disney Highlight Action. Cool. So highlight actions, as you can see here, have a source and a target sheet. The source sheet is the one that your viewers will be interacting on. In our case, it will be the Disney Production Company's sheet. So let's check that. And you can see that our action here will be running on select. There's also hover and menu that you can do to trigger the action. For our target sheet, that is the one where you see the highlight action that actually do things on. In our case, it's going to be the Disney movies profit by budget. Cool. Now, let's test it. When I click on Walt Disney Productions, you can see that on the right, all of the marks that have that all of the marks that are created by Walt Disney Productions are now highlighted on the right. So now your user can control what is being highlighted uh, just through this one control on the left. What we can see here is that although Walt Disney Productions produced movies that did not have a very high budget, it actually generated relatively more profit. This makes sense because Walt Disney Productions was one of the first divisions of Disney. Now, what kind of movies did Walt Disney Productions produce? Let's add a label to the right that only triggers on highlight. We can go to the sheet, and we can drag out title into label. All right, now I want to show this only on highlight. So we click on label, we click on highlighted, and we deselect allow labels to overlap other marks. This way we don't crowd the view with a bunch of labels. Now when I go back, you can see that the view now has labels. And such classics like Bambi and Mary Poppins, which are very fundamental in Disney's uh, initial rise of fame, are on here. All right, let's recap. So. Highlighting is useful if your user wants to find certain data within a sea of other data without leaving the context. As you can see, none of the marks actually disappeared, they just faded into the background, and the ones that they did want to see were brought to the foreground. It's also very easy to select uh, marks of very similar attributes through the legend. 
not only did I talk about highlighting, I also talked about actions. So actions are useful for driving change across multiple views. You can select in one view and highlight in another, for example, with highlight actions. You will see actions later on in, the, uh, in this talk a lot. But for now, let's move on to our next topic, filters. So I mentioned that highlighting is useful for finding data while remaining in context. Filtering, on the other hand, changes the view or context, and it only shows you the data that you want to see. Let's look at some examples. Here is a very simple chart that you may have created uh, whenever you first log into Tableau. It is merely the profit of all the movies over the years. Now, this is not very interactive because your user can't actually do much with this. What we can do is drag out a filter so they can find their favorite production company's profit per year. Let's take a look. If I drag out production companies into filter, let's just have all of them for now. I can go and show the filter, and this brings up the filter control on the right. Now, I'm interested in Disney. Let's go over here, deselect all, search, and type in Disney. We can click and multi-select here by holding shift, and then we can click on one of these, select all Disney. And now you can see Disney's profit per year. All right. Tableau provides a lot of ways for you to customize this card on the right. If you can see here, this dropdown provides many different formats that this card can appear in. Let's stay with multiple values list, but let's customize it and show an apply button. So every single time you click on one of these checkboxes on the right, and executes a query to your database. If you were to select multiple of them, it's going to query your database every single time you click one of the checkboxes. By adding the apply button, I can now click on a few of them. And then when I finally hit apply, it only sends one query to your database. So then you're not sending a ton of queries to your database. Cool. Let's move on to another ex uh, example of filters. So here I have the top uh, movies by year. They are all ranked, but this is a ton of movies. What if I'm only interested in the top 25, let's say? We can use a filter to do this. Let's go over to the title and add that to filters. I'm gonna click on top, top 25, by profit average, hit OK, and boom. 25 marks, 25 movies. Now, this is not very interactive. Let's add the production companies again. Okay, and let's show the filter. I'm gonna bring it back to the multi-value dropdown, because nope, that's not the one. The multi-values list to bring back the control that I like. And I'm gonna search for Disney again. Okay, now I see the Frozen is a top movie. But wait, I wanted 25 values, not four. What's going on here? Well, filters are pretty intricate. They have an order of operations, like the way math has order of operations. If you have an expression and you don't use the order of operations, turns out you probably won't get the answer that you're looking for. This is the same with filters. So what I'm showing here is a Tableau help page. These, this is a great resource for you to learn more about things like filters. And if you scroll down here, you're going to see this. This is the order of operations in Tableau in which filters are executed. There's a lot of things here, but what we're interested in are these three marks. So over here, you can see that top end filters gets executed before a dimension filter like Disney or a production company. So that means we are first filtering the top 25, and then we're filtering all the Disney movies that are within the top 25 of all movies. 
when, what I really wanted was the top 25 Disney movies. So to fix this, we were going to promote our dimension filter production company into a context filter up here. So that means that the Disney filter gets executed before the top 25 filter. Let's do that. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna click down on the filter and go to add to context. Now adding the context, we'll promote it to a context filter and now that gets executed first before the title. And as you can see here, we now have 25 marks again. Is my favorite movie on here? It is not. Drats. <laughs> okay. So we just went through, uh, we just went through filtering on a single worksheet. What does it look like? What does it look like on a dashboard? Well, first thing I would like to direct you to is another analogy. This is a scene from 101 Dalmatians. Now, if you remember before, in highlighting, whenever you clicked on a mark, it actually just highlighted in another sheet. How does that differ in filtering? What if I wanted to find the dog Patch? Whenever you click on, uh, whenever you click on Patch in another sheet, you can see that highlighting will actually fade all the dogs to their background, whereas filtering just shows Patch. So cognitively, you aren't overloaded by the number of dogs here. Let's go back to Tableau and show a filter action. Here we have a dashboard. On the left, we have profit by year, as we've seen before. And on the right, we have a simplified version of the top 25. Now it's only showing the top 10. What if my user wanted to see the top 10 movies per year when they click on a year on the left? We can use a filter action. The quickest way to do it is we can click on the sheet on the left and this icon right here that says use as filter. Now, when I click that, you don't see very much happen right now. But if I were to go to the actions dialog, you can see that Tableau generated this filter for us. So now, whenever we select and we target the sheet on the left, it's going to filter all the views by the year. Let's test it out. I'm gonna click on 1994. Wait, nothing's showing up on the right. What's going on? Well, if you remember before that there is an order of operations, this also applies to actions. So if we go to uh, this sheet, we add the action here to the context, and we go back, you can see that this is now showing the top 10 movies. So again, oh, The Lion King's here. Great, I love that movie, all right. Let me give you one last filter action example. On the top, we have the same profit by year, but this time I want to give my user more details. Sometimes they just want to see more details. So on the bottom, I've included this table of movie details as things like title, budget, profit, and runtime. But there's a lot on there. I don't wanna always be having my user scroll through there every single time they wanna find a movie. What if it was filtered by what we select on top? Let's do this through a filter action by going to the actions dialog and creating a filter action. We're going to name this filter action detail. We're gonna run it on select, and our target, our, our source is going to be the view on the top, which is the filter table profit by year. And our target is going to be the table on the bottom. Now, what do we want the behavior to be when nothing is selected? I want to not actually show the table so it doesn't have so much stuff for them to always view every single time they open this page. So, whenever you clear the selection on top, I wanted to exclude all values. Okay, let's test this out. 
Now, when I click on 1994, you can see the Lion King's back on here because the bottom is, is uh, ordered by profit. And it filters to just the movies that were released in 1994. And finally, when I click out, you can see that the table disappears, so the data is only available whenever your user is ready for it. Okay, let's recap. Filtering is useful for reducing cognitive and computational load. It helps your users focus on just the data they want instead of having a context of data that they don't want. We also demoed filter actions, which like highlight actions trigger whenever you select a mark on one view, it filters all the other views to just the data they want to see. Now, as we mentioned, there are things like order of operation and performance gains you can get from filters, and that's a very intricate to topic. If you would like to learn more, we'll include a talk at the end that you can go to to learn more about that. But for now, I'm gonna hand it off to Katrina to give you even more ways you can add interactivity to your business. Thanks, Calvin. I wanna talk about parameters. Parameters are an incredibly flexible and interactive way that you can use Tableau. They allow you to change the view or the context so that your user can see the view in just the way that they want. They allow you to create user-defined variables and then use them in calculations and the view to drive change. To explain parameters, I wanna start with an analogy. How many of you have seen the movie Inside Out? It's a pretty great movie. It's about a girl, Riley, who moves from the Midwest to California, and she's less than thrilled. It's told through, the, it's told through several characters that convey her emotions. Sadness, joy, fear, disgust, and anger. If the user, in this analogy, these emotions will be the parameters. If you're interested to see how Riley views the world through under emotions, you can select that and you'll see Riley change so that Riley is now viewing the world through that given emotion. If we select fear, we see that Riley is now viewing the world through the perspective of fear. If we select anger, we can see that Riley is now viewing the world through the perspective of anger. In this view, using a parameter, Riley doesn't change. It's just how she's seeing the world does change. Parameters are really useful ways to add this interactivity so that the user can select the view that is most interesting to them. Let's jump into an example to talk about parameters. I'm gonna start with an example of a top end filter. Kelvin ta taught us how to filter our, our vizs by top 25. But what if I don't wanna know the top 25 movies? I only wanna know the top 10 movies or top 15, or maybe the top 13 for some reason. We can do this with parameters and we can let our user pick what value they wanna use. We're gonna create a parameter. Let's create a parameter and we're gonna call this parameter n because these are often called top n filters. The parameter needs to be of the type an integer, and we're gonna let the user pick from a range of values between one and 100 with a step size of one. Okay, now we've created our parameter. But now we need to expose this parameter to the user because the whole point in parameters is that the user gets to pick their value. So let's show the parameter control. Great, now we can change the parameter control to a number, but nothing's happening. This is because we need to consume the parameter in the view to drive change. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna edit our filter, which is right now filtered by top 10. Instead of filtering by the top 10, we wanna filter by n. So we're gonna select this dropdown, and you'll see it's auto-populated with all the parameters that we have in the view. Let's select n and hit okay. Now, you can see as I change the parameter value, the number of top movies in our viz changes. Pretty cool. So now we can see the top whatever number of movies I wanna see. Pretty helpful. Let's move on to another example. Right now, we've been looking at the top movies by profit. But what if our user isn't interested in profit? Let's say they wanna view the top movies by budget, popularity, or even movie runtime. 
As the author, it's really easy to be able to swap out the measures as you go. But your users and your viewers don't get this ability. But you can add this ability by using parameters. So let's see how we can add a parameter, swap out our measures. Let's go into this view. To begin, we're going to create a parameter just as we did last time. We're going to call this movie metric. And we're going to have this be a string. And the user is going to be able to select the parameter from a list of values. The list of values will include profit, budget, popularity, and runtime. Great. We'll select OK. And again, we're going to show this parameter control to make sure that our user has the ability to change the parameter. We've created our parameter, but now we need to use this parameter in a view. We're going to, this time, we're going to create a calculated field to consume this parameter. So let's go in and create a calculated field. And we're going to call this movie metric average. And I've already written this calculated field, and so you don't have to watch me type. I'm going to paste it in, but I'll explain it. What we're doing here is for the parameter movie metric, when the parameter value equals profit, the value that is returned is the average profit. When the parameter equals budget, the value that's returned is the average budget, and so on and so forth. Let's click OK. Now you can see, as I change the parameter value, that doesn't work. <laughs> and the reason that this is working, because right now, all we've done is define the calculated fields. We need to use this calculated field in our view. In our view, all that's showing is the average profit. So we're going to drag the, pop, the calculated field we've created and swap out average profit for average movie metric. And now, as I select and change the parameter, our view updates to view that, to have the data viewed by what the user selects. And to make sure it's really easy and the user understands what we're viewing it by, we're going to add the value of the parameter to our, uh, to our worksheet title. So here we'll go in and we'll add parameters movie metric. So now it's easy to tell. Let's go to back to our dashboard where we started. We can show the parameter control to make sure the user is able to edit the parameter on the dashboard. And we can change the parameter value here. Right now, this is only changing the view on the right. But let's change the view on the left also. So we're going to go into this view. We already have a parameter created. And we already have our, we're already showing our parameter on the dashboard. We already have our calculated field. So all we need to do now is swap out average profit for average movie metric. Now if I go back to the dashboard, I can control the parameter and control both views. One thing that's different about parameters from other things is that parameters are defined globally. One parameter value is used across the workbook. And so this can be really powerful to use parameters across data sources. To recap, parameters are a really powerful way to let your user define their variables and to really engage your user in the view. They can see the data however they want to see it. You just have to create the variable so they can define their own variables. It allows a lot of flexibility and for you to customize your views for your users. Because parameters are so flexible and can add so much interactivity, we've only scratched the surface. But at the end of the talk, we'll link to another talk about parameters. If you're interested, you can attend and learn more about the details of parameters and see a ton of other things that you can do with them. They're super powerful. For now, I want to move on to sets and set actions. How many of you just came from devs on stage? If you just came from devs on stage, you just saw set actions. They're awesome. I'm super excited about them, and I'm sure you all will be. As soon as you get, get your hands on 2018.3, you'll get a play around, and you'll see how cool they are. I'm going to show you a little bit about how we can build set actions to do something called proportional brushing. Devs on stage gave you a taste, but we're going to walk through an example a little bit more slowly because they're so cool. I'm just so excited about them. Because set actions have the ability where you can actually get at the data and you can have the user, uh, you can have the user dynamically change the values of the set by interacting with the marks. And they can do this to reveal more data in their dashboard so you can really, really dig in and let the user create their own experience. So let's see this with an example. Okay. 
I'm going to start off with this dashboard that I've already created using a set action, and then we'll walk through how I created this. We're looking at the top 10 movies on the right, and on the left, we have the total amount of profit in a given year that's been produced by all the movies. We can see in our tooltip that Avatar was produced in 2009. And Avatar made a lot of money. But I want to know how much of 2009's profits can be attributed to Avatar. So if I select the Avatar movie on the right, we can see the proportion of 2009's profits that are contributed to Avatar on the left. And this is colored by that movie that title that we've selected. Let's say we want to select Star Wars, and we can use tooltip selection, as Kelvin taught us. And we can see all the 2015 movies that are in the top 10, all their profits on the left. And it looks like that all these five movies have produced a pretty sizable portion of 2015's profits. Pretty impressive. So let's see how this works, and let's build it together. Here I have the same dashboard, but I haven't created my set yet, and I haven't created my set action, because we're going to do that together. We're going to go into this view on the left, because this is the view that we want to change and have our set impact. And what we need to do is we need to create our set. And we want to create our set on a title. The way that sets work is for a given dimension, you have every single data in that dimension either in or out of the set. It's that simple. So we're going to go to our title, and we're going to create a set. And initially, I'm going to have this set be empty. And I'm going to call this movie title set action. OK. So I've created my set, but now I want the set to visually impact the view. So I'm going to drag out set to color, because we want the viz colored by whether or not the data is in or out of the set. Right now, we can see that all of our data is out of the set, because I had my set empty initially. Let's go back to this view. You could do this all before, before set actions. But now, we want to let the user interact with the view to dynamically update the membership of the set. This is what is so powerful about set actions. So we need to create a set action. We're going to go up to Dashboard and to the Actions dialog. Let's add an action that says Change Set Values. We're going to call this Movie Title Set Action. We're going to run this set action on Selection, and we want the user to interact with the view on the right to drive it, which is the top 10 for set action. And now we also have to select a target. Our target data set is the Movies 2 Extract, and the set that we want to impact is the movie title set action. OK. And now, you can see that if I select Avatar, the proportion of Avatar's profits, uh, the proportion of profits in 2009 that can be contributed to Avatar are highlighted on the left. If I select multiple movies, you can see that that changes the view on the left as well. One small thing I want to change to make sure that we're using visual best practices here is I'm going to go into this view, and I'm going to change the order of this. In this way, it's easier to compare the different movie titles to each other. If I go back to this dashboard, you can see that this is probably a little easier to compare the values to each other. Set actions, super awesome. As I said before, set actions give you the user the ability to dynamically update the membership of a set. This allows you to to let the user get at the data so that you can drive calculations and drive changes in the view. These are incredibly powerful things, and I'm so excited that we've just released them. There are a number of talks about set actions because everyone here is super stoked about them. I'm going to link to two talks at the end that dive into more advanced examples about set actions because there are so many cool things that we can do, and I'm sure you're going to discover so many more cool things that you can do than you'll even see at this conference. So we'll link to those talks at the end of this. For now, let's move on to tooltips. Tooltips are a really helpful way to let, the user, to, let you, to let the user interact with your data to reveal more information. You don't want to crowd your view initially when your user sees it with too much data. You want them to explore and see their data on their own when they're interested in. Tooltips are a really powerful way to let the user interact and to reveal more data on, the on demand so they don't get information overload. They just get the details that they want to see. To talk about tooltips, I'm going to use an analogy from my favorite movie. If you know this scene, 
This, or if you know this image, this is an image from Finding Nemo. You might not know why I picked this movie, or you pick, why I picked this image from this movie. I know exactly when this is happening, but you might not. But lucky for you, I provided a tooltip. So if we interact with our Dory mark, we can learn that Doru speaks whale. This is a super funny part of the movie, but it might not be information that you need initially when you see this image. But it's helpful information if you really care about finding Dory, or finding Nemo, and finding Dory, like I do. So if you interact with the view, you can learn more information on demand. And I can learn that Marlin doesn't speak whale. Useful information, but not something you initially want, just something that's useful in a tooltip. So let's see this with data in Tableau. Here we have another view of looking at the top 10 movies by profit. And when we come to this view, we're gonna have a we have a similar question as we had in the last dashboard, but I'm gonna show this a little bit of a different way. So if we wanna ask the same question, what proportion of 2009's profit did Avatar contribute to? I'm gonna hover over Avatar and select it, and you can see in a tooltip with set actions using it, we're actually able to get a tooltip that's colored by what we're selected. So we can see in our tooltip that Avatar contributed 7.5% of the total movie profits in 2015. We can select Star Wars and see the same thing. We can use our tooltip selection, and now we get 33.5% that these five movies in the top 10 movies have contributed to 2015's profits. There are so many different ways that you can add an activity and you can reveal this data. The last dashboard was one way, this is another. Let's figure out how I built this. Here, I have the same worksheet, but I haven't yet added my tooltip, my vision tooltip, or my set action. We're gonna do that together. Over here, I have my view, which is, which is the view that I'm gonna use in my tooltip. This is just looking at the total profit over time. No filters, just total profit. And that's the view we wanna use in our tooltip. So we're gonna go and edit our tooltip. And I've already edited the text of it, and I just want to insert my, my viz. So let's insert the sheet, viz and tooltip total profit. OK. So now you can see the total profit of the movies that we're hovering over in the tooltip, represented in the viz. But this isn't super useful right now. Because for Avatar, in my main view, I'm seeing that it's produced two and a half, two, wow, a lot of money. <laughs> Um, and if I, in my tooltip, I can see the same thing. But we don't want that. And what it's doing right now, and why we're getting duplicate bars, is that if we go back to this view, we can see that our Vizin tooltip has created a filter. And our Vizin tooltip is filtering on both year and title. We only want it to filter on year because we want to look at the proportion of movie profits that this given title has produced for a given year. So let's change that filter. We're going to go into our tooltip, Instead of, instead of editing by all fields, we're gonna filter by year of the release date. And now you can see a different number because now this is filtering and showing the total profits for a given year. And now we're gonna add the set action part of this because we want this viz in the tooltip to dynamically update to show the percentage of that year's profits that this movie contributes to. This means we need to start by creating a set. We'll go back to this sheet because this is the sheet that we want to visually impact with our set. We're gonna go and create a set based on our title dimension. We're gonna call this movie title viz in tooltip. And again, I want this initially empty. I'm also gonna drag this set onto color because we wanna see the change based on the color. We can see that all of our movies right now are out of the set. And I wanted to know this number in a percentage rather than a sum, so I'm gonna change these to show the percent of total. Great, let's go back to the sheet and now we see the view that we've changed in this sheet. But we want, a we want to dynamically update the membership of the set, so we need to add our set action. 
Instead of adding a dashboard action as we've done before, we're gonna create a worksheet action since we're on a worksheet. We're gonna add our action, change set values. We'll call this Viz and Tooltip set action. It'll be source, the source will be the sheet that we're currently on. We'll run it on selection and it'll from the movies to extract to the movie title Viz and Tooltip set. Okay. And now you see as I select Avatar, about 7.5% of the profits from 2009 are from Avatar. For Star Wars, about 9% of the profits in 2015 are from Star Wars. About a third of the profits of these top five movies contributed to all of the profits in 2015. Combining tooltips, viz and tooltip, and set actions, you can do some pretty powerful things to provide more details on demand. It's really nice for your user to be able to get more information, but only get it as they interact and as they're interested in it. Because that way, they're able to create their own experience and be more engaged with the content that you create. Tooltips keep your dashboard minimalistic because this way you don't have to provide all of this detail initially when, they do, when, initially when they see the view. They can hover and they can interact and they can learn and that makes your content that much more engaging and they'll actually remember what they're learning better. Now, let's move on to another topic. URL actions. URL actions are another type of action and that are a really powerful way for you to reveal more data. It's a nice way for you to be able to incorporate external content and websites and help your user learn more that way. So let's see an example. Here we have a dashboard that is a word cloud of a bunch of Disney movies. I'm sure Kelvin could tell you a little bit about every single one of these Disney movies, but I don't know that much about Disney. So I need a little help from my friend Wikipedia. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create a web page. And we're gonna have this web page go to wikipedia.org. And now what I want to happen is as I, select a, as I select a mark at the top, I want to Wikipedia search that movie. I've embedded the Wikipedia page and the search will happen in that page. So I need to create a URL action. Let's go up to the dashboard, open up the actions dialog and create a URL action. We'll call this wiki search this movie. And the source sheet will be this view on the top, the word cloud, we'll have it run on selection, and now we have to add the URL that it's gonna go to. What's really cool is that we can use our fields to drive which URL we'll go to. So I'm gonna have this wiki search, and I happen to know that the, uh, that the URL to go to is wikipedia.org and slash wiki and then if you add your search term. In this case, we wanna add the search term for the movie title. And now, if I select Pirates of the Caribbean, you can see that Wikipedia will not search it. <laughs> Let's go and edit this to make sure I've done it correctly. We'll add another slash here. And now, we wiki search Pirates of the Caribbean. So now maybe if I take this dashboard with me to trivia with Kelvin, I can beat him. URL actions are a really great way to incorporate external content into your dashboards. You can link to websites and you can do a lot of creative things with them to provide and bring in external content into Tableau and to drive changes that way. It's sometimes not all your information is gonna be in Tableau and gonna be in your data set, but you can pull it into Tableau with URL actions. Let's move on to our last topic, navigation. This is, we're gonna talk about two different things in navigation. One is the new navigation action, the other is the new navigation dashboard button. We're gonna talk about both and I'm gonna tell you a little about how they're different and when you should use each. Both are really useful ways for you to take your user through a journey in your workbook and help them navigate along the way. Here we, have a here we have a dashboard that's a bunch of Disney profits over time. Sometimes it's nice to have your user start at a dashboard that's just a bit of an overview. Sometimes you don't want your user to be overwhelmed initially when they look at your dashboard. You kind of want to start them out and take them the journey through your workbook. So here, this is a great place to start. We're looking at how Disney profits have increased over time and that overall there have been almost $30 billion in profit. It's a ton of money. And so over here, I've also created another sheet that breaks down Disney profits a little bit more. 
Here you have a filter and you can interact with the different, you can interact with the filter to change the year. And you can also see the breakdown of a bunch of movies based on their profit and their budget. So I want the users to end up here, but only if they want to little, know a little bit more information about Disney profits. But I want them to initially start at this view because I think this is a good beginning, good beginning place. Let's create a dashboard action so that the user can navigate. We're going to go to this actions dialog and we're going to say go to sheet. With the new navigation action, you can, at, you can navigate to sheets, dashboards, and stories. Pretty cool. We want the source to be the Disney Profit KPI dashboard, and we're going to run this on menu instead because we don't, not, we don't want our user to accidentally navigate. The target sheet is going to be the Disney Profit breakdown sheet, and we want to la label this uh, learn more about Disney profits. Okay. And now you'll see if I interact with the KPI, I get a tooltip that says learn more about Disney profits. And if I select this option, I navigate to this sheet. Great. Now I'm here. How do I get back? Here I could add another navigation action. And I, my user could interact with the marks to go back. But remember what Kelvin taught about actions. You have to interact with the marks and with the data to trigger the action. Here, none of the marks really make sense for me to select to take me back. So instead, I'm going to use a dashboard button. Over here, I'm going to drag out my button onto the view. And you can see that I get this little image. But this is more than an image. Let's edit it. And you can see that this dashboard, there we go. And you can see that this dashboard button has the ability to navigate. Let's navigate back to our navigation Disney Profit dashboard. It's right there. We also have the ability to choose a custom image, but I'm going to keep this image because I think it looks like a back button. And now I can use this dashboard button to get back to where I came from. This is super easy ways to build and navigation to your dashboards to make your workbooks really easy to create the workflow and to guide your users through the experience. I just talked about two new ways to navigate in Tableau. They're different. Navigation actions are actions. The user interacts with a mark to net then navigate to a sheet, dashboard, or story. Dashboard buttons are dashboard objects. They're image objects that have navigation functionality built in so you can navigate to somewhere else in your workbook by interacting with the image. They're both super helpful ways to help your user navigate through the flow of your workbook and to guide your user on their data adventure. Wow. Wow, we just went over eight ways you can add analytical interactivity to your business for your users. There was a lot of details, and we don't expect you to remember all of them, because after all, there's always Google. But what we do want you to remember is when to use each. Here's how we like to think about it. These were the original three categories that we put in the beginning of the talk. Find, reveal, and change. The first thing we talked about was selection. Selection was a key driver of change throughout our presentation. The kinds of change you can affect include highlighting and highlighting actions. Highlighting is useful for finding relevant data within a sea of other data while remaining within the context. Now, what if your user wants to reveal more data? We have sets, tooltips, and URL actions for that. Now your users can get more data when they're ready for it. Finally, what if your user actually does want to change the view or the context? We have filters, parameters, and navigation for this. And that way, your users are only the viewing the data that they actually want to see. As we mentioned throughout the talk, here is a list of related talks you can go to. I talked about how filters have nuance to them and that they affect cognitive and computational load. Things like order of operations and performance can be covered with Espresso Self with Tableau filters. Katrina talked about parameters and gave two examples, but as we mentioned, 
there are a ton of examples you can do with parameters and really cool things you can do with them. So oh, the places you'll go might be the place you go after this talk. I mentioned set actions, and there are a number of talks about set actions happening. Here are two that I highly recommend, Ready, Set, Action, and Sets Appeal, two fantastic talks that are a little bit more advanced where you can really dive into the power of set actions and see some new fantastic examples. If you'd like, we'd love you to complete the survey of how, what you, of how you thought this talk went so that we can make it even better for next year. And with that, we want to say thank you so much for listening to this talk. We are so appreciative of all of you, and we are so excited about Tableau, and we're so happy to share. So if you'd like to get in contact with us, our emails are up here. We'll also stay for a little while after the talk. We love hearing from our customers. You all are fantastic. So thank you, and have a great conference.